A hawksbill turtle posing for our cameras as it swims past our dive site near Lakshadweep's Bangaram Island. But look carefully at the terrain around the turtle. White rubble, a graveyard of dead coral. Why should you or I care? Because in simple terms, the death of corals in the Arabian Sea could have an impact on the survival of the Lakshadweep Islands because coral reefs act as natural breakwaters which minimize the impact of waves from powerful storms such as cyclones and typhoons. But when ocean temperatures rise because of global warming, coral reefs disintegrate and die. essentially leaving millions of inhabitants on these islands exposed not just to storm surges but also rising sea levels, the other potentially catastrophic impact of global warming. Put in another way, without their protective ring of coral reef, the Lakshadweep Islands can sink as the levels of the oceans rise. We're on the island of Kadmat in Lakshadweep and through this series we intend to bring you footage of some of the damage to India's coral formations in both the Arabian Sea and in the Bay of Bengal. Joining us in this series, some of India's leading scuba divers and conservationists to explain to us why our coral formations stand squarely at a crossroads. The Lakshadweep chain officially consists of 36 islands and islets. Almost all the atolls have a northeast southwest orientation with the islands lying on the eastern rim and a mostly submerged coral reef on the western rim enclosing a lagoon. The submerged coral reef, besides steaming with life, acts as a protective barrier against choppy seas. Dr. Rohan Arthur is one of a handful of marine biologists in India who actually dive the oceans. The Lakshadweep Islands are Rohan's life and his study of the corals here was the basis of his PhD. For Rohan, one event in 1998, a temporary change in the climate of the Pacific Ocean linked to the El Nino effect came as a bolt from the blue. It was an event which devastated the corals in the Lakshadweep chain and served as a wake-up call on what happens when seawater temperatures rise. The El Nino is a fairly normal phenomenon. It's a phenomenon that, that, uh, that people have known, for, known of for, for centuries. It's been um, it, it, it happens on a, on a cyclic, in a cyclic way, about once every seven to ten years. Um, in a normal El Nino year, the temperatures rise by about one or two degrees, and uh, that's something that ecosystems are, uh, to some extent, uh, acclimated to. However, in 1998, sea temperatures rose between three and a half to four degrees above seasonal averages around that around the months of uh, May, April, and May, and. Um, that resulted in, in a mass mortality of coral. Uh, I came here in 1998 and I saw within the span of about three weeks we had a major mortality of, uh, of coral uh, resulting in, uh, at the end of 1998, in December 1998, there was only 5% of live coral left uh, in many of the luxury pilots. This dive site is called Double uh, Reef. Uh, basically, you have uh, the reef uh, on a uh, shallow reef, and then it goes uh, dips down to around 20-21 uh, meters. There's a sand bank, uh, which actually suits us because we uh, come like slightly south, south of the uh, the dive side. Mm -hmm. So we go down, and we just uh, go with the current more. Okay. For Mitali Kakkar, who runs the NGO Reef Watch, which monitors the health of our coral shelf, 
the events of 1998 were worse than a nightmare. Nitali has been diving these waters for years. As one of India's most experienced scuba divers, Nitali knows the coral sites here like the back of her hand. Some of the sites of Kadmat and Bangaram Islands such as Jack Point, Shark Alley, The Wall and Nanta Point were some of the finest in the world. Today, despite the recovery of coral at some spots, they remain a patch of what they were a decade back. I had the privilege to dive here when, uh, it, when the coral here was in its full glory. And, um, and then in 1998, there was this El Nino uh, phenomenon which we didn't really understand then. But when I came back that year in October and I saw the kind of devastation uh, in these coral reefs, it was then that I truly understood the, uh, the magnitude of uh, global warming, the El Nino current actually and its effects on coral reefs.